Good? Yeah. All right. Hello, Ooh. everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Monday. This is the last Monday before Christmas and Hanukkah holidays. So I'm sure everybody's got a lot going on. So we really appreciate you showing up today. Um, as always, we bring to you great information and it doesn't take a lot of time. So we know time is valuable, especially right now. Um, so, but we have a good one today because um, we also have a new product launch. So that's a big one. So today we're going to discuss um, men. So a lot mm -hmm. of it, a lot of it, I'm going to let Dr. Ryan lead with it. But basically hormone imbalances in men are often overlooked, right? We think of hormone imbalances. Talk about our new product, Vitality. Yes, too. We, yeah, that's kind of, that's a, well, that's what I said, our new product launch. Um, yeah, so um, hormone imbalances in men are often overlooked. Uh, it's more common for a female thing to think of, you know, women having hormonal imbalances. But with men, they can significantly affect your physical health, your mental well-being, and your overall quality of life. And addressing these, um, the addressing hormone imbalances, for that way, is not optional. It is essential for optimal performance and vitality. Vitality. Um, so today we're going to discuss signs or the top five signs of hormone imbalances in men. Typically, what causes these hormone imbalances? What can be done? And of course, we're going to close out a big chunk of it talking about our vitality, our men's hormone support supplement that just launched last week. And we're super excited about it. Um, I know you men are very excited about it. And also you women, you're excited about getting your husbands, boyfriends, significant others on this as well. Okay. So let's go into the five signs. Let's do it. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So I'm just going to say all five of them first. These are the most common. And then we're going to kind of discuss each one a little bit. So you have low energy levels. You have changes in libido, mood swings or depression, weight changes and hair loss or, or changes in, in hair pattern, right? Um, so when it comes to low energy levels, uh, this is like a, a persistent fatigue and lack of energy that... Um, even after sufficient rest, right? So it's really unexplained. Like, why am I always so tired? I get enough sleep at night. Um, one of those, you know, main causes in men can be hormone imbalances. Um, and then changes in libido, just noticing a change in um, sex drive or a difficulty um, achieving or maintaining erections. This can all be linked to low testosterone. It's a major one. Um, mood swings or depression. I feel like this is not a common one. I mean, I don't think it's common. I don't know about you men out there or maybe women that maybe see their men experiencing these mood changes, mood swings and depression that you don't know that this is actually could be a cause of hormonal imbalances. I mean, irritability, anxiety, depression, all these hormone fluctuations, typically testosterone, cortisol, all those imbalances. And then uh, weight changes, typically gain. So mm -hmm. unexplained weight gain. I've been doing the same thing. I've been doing everything right or whatever. And you all of a sudden start to gain weight predominantly around the midsection. So you gain, you gain that belly fat, um, difficulty building muscle, right? That's another big one because we know that the testosterone helps us uh, to build muscle. Um, yeah. So those could be all indicate changes in your hormones and then the hair loss, hair loss or change, thinning, balding, unrelated to genetics. Okay. You have to, you have to keep that in mind. Um, thinning hair balding can be associated with it as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want to elaborate on any of those? I know the big one is talking about this. So Yeah, well, I think, look, <laughs> as we age, we already know this, but our testosterone levels decline. So mm -hmm. all of the different things you said, these are the most, like the five most like kind of noticeable things that happen in your mm -hmm. life. But, you know, when you are a man in your 20s, in your 30s, and then in your 40s and 50s, things start to happen pretty quickly. And then they accelerate even faster, just a lot of times due to our lifestyle. Jumping to like the treatment to how to fix thing, you would be like lifestyle alterations. You have to deploy lifestyle changes very, very, very uh, abruptly and, and you have to do it with a lot of effort, right? There's a lot of things you need to do to correct hormones later in life. Earlier on, of course, there's some things that you should be thinking about, but it's this environmental exposures. It's our lifestyle. It's our alcohol. It's our sleep. It's our work patterns, our, our sleep patterns, our work schedules. Mm -hmm. It's all these different things that contribute to it. So when you start to go through these five things that Lisa just read off, you're thinking like, in my mind, I'm thinking it's a nasty cycle because a change in libido is not good because then you increase your stress and anxiety, right? Now you're like, you're dealing, and a lot of times men just will not speak up. They will not ask for help. They will not seek help. So now they got a decrease in libido. Now they're feeling like they're just 
just not even a man. Like they're feeling less than a man, right? Mood swings and depression. Now they're just thinking like, I'm not talking about that. That's just, I am a man. I have to deal with this and I'll deal with it accordingly. But no, it's real. And so you have these extreme swings and anxiety and, and uh, a lot of different fluctuations in mood. Weight changes. Um, the problem with weight changes is, is the fact that if you're putting on visceral adipose fat, the, the big bellies, which most men today have, most men are, are putting these bellies on. So they're putting fat around their organs. That's the stuff that is, has more um, likelihood. It, it's the stuff that's, that's aromatizing into estrogen. And so not only are you losing skeletal muscle mass because your body composition is all out of whack, but now you've got this body fat around your organs that is aromatizing into estrogen. So it's actually helping your body produce more estrogen. So therefore you're getting a lot of the other side effects so, you know, you're really out of whack and that cycle gets worse because as you put more weight on and you continue to put more weight on and you don't make corrections and your estrogen levels climb, your testosterone levels decline, you you can already see what's happening, right? So it's, a, vicious, it's cycle. a vicious cycle, right? <laughs> and then the hair loss, of course, is secondary to all of these different things. So a lot of that is what's going on. So, yes. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to pause you right there yep. and I'm just going to first, if you guys don't follow us already, make sure you follow, subscribe, like, leave comments. It helps us, but it also helps you get the information um, as well. And also we do take uh, questions throughout this oh, and yeah. at the it's end, but look. the questions have to be um, pertaining to the topic at hand. Um, we do every month do a live Q and A, which will be next week. Um, and that way you, there's where you can bring all kinds of questions to the table and we'll address them. Um, so today is, again, we'll be answering the questions related to the topic today. Um, so uh, a lot of the things that Ryan, Dr. Ryan was talking about, the, the causes of hormonal imbalances in men are also ways to fix it. Oh, sure. Right? Exactly. So, okay, aging. We cannot fix aging. We can't fix aging. It is what it is. So if you suspect due to an, your age, um, maybe your testosterone levels have dropped. I mean, seek a doctor, get it, get it tested so you can understand what's going on and be on the, the correct path. But stress, okay, stress can cause hormonal imbalances. But how can we fix this? We can work on our stress. Right. <laughs> it's very important to work on your stress. And then this goes with like, you know, you'll see these common things, right, across all health conditions. Um, and stress is a, a big one. So is poor diet, a diet's high in processed foods, sugar, unhealthy fats. I mean, we this causes insulin resistance. Insulin resistance disrupts hormone production, right? So you've got to feel, how do we fix this? We focus on our diet. We eat a clean, healthy, balanced diet, low in processed foods to zero processed foods, low in, in sugars uh, to zero sugars, you know, a high protein, good quality fats, um, lack of physical activity causes hormone imbalances. Yeah. What can we do to fix it? We can exercise. And yeah. you know, we're talking about yeah. lifting weights. Lifting weights and building muscle helps hormone production. Absolutely. So a lot of it's not just like, I, oh, well, I'm going to start going on a walk. Walks are great. Don't get me wrong. They're extremely healthy. Love my walks. But you need to increase your muscle mass. Sure. Okay. So that's really going to help with the hormone production. And then another cause, excess weight or obesity. So like even though hormonal imbalances can cause excess weight, even before the hormonal imbalances begin, excess weight or obesity can cause the hormone imbalances. That's even going to further escalate the issue, right? So we need to work on keeping our weight in check. Um, sleep problems, poor quality sleep or conditions like sleep apnea, which is very common in men, um, interfere with production of testosterone and growth hormone. So you need to focus on your sleep. And if you suspect you have sleep apnea, I mean, there's the CPAP for it. There's um, dentists can make that um, a mouth guard. That, that helps with it, but find something that works for you because if, if sleep apnea, there's other dangers of it too, but it's really affecting your hormone production, let's work on it. Exposure to endocrine disruptors. Um, this is a big one, chemicals and plastics. We know BPA. So you're going and you're taking your Ziploc Tupperware with your leftovers in it and pop it in the microwave, heating that up, getting those plastics leached into there. Um, BPA, endocrine disruptors, they affect our hormones. So you really need to focus on using glass, right? materials um, that do not that do not contain BPA. Um, of course, there's medical conditions and, you know, things that possibly can't, maybe it's genetic, whatnot, but also just 
hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. Those are very common with thyroid. Yeah. Just, you know. And that's important to mention too, how many different hormones there are. There's a sure. lot of different hormones, sure. but today we're focusing on mostly the sex hormones. We're talking about your testosterone, which men and women both have. We're talking about estrogen levels, which men and women both have. We're talking right. about progesterone, and men and women both have. Those are your predominant sex hormones. Right. But of course we know there's luteinizing hormone, there's follicle stimulating hormone. So that's LH and FSH. There's DHEA, there's DHT. All these different hormones, they have different metabolic pathways, they're metabolized differently, different levels can be higher and, and lower. So being, uh, am I interrupting? No, because it was much? just talking about the, uh, the hypo and hyperthyroidism right, thyroid, can yeah. actually, those are imbalances of your thyroid hormones, but sure. those can cause imbalances exactly. 